Hi, welcome to today's coffee chat. I'm Sierra. I'm the founder of Creative Edge Travel, and we help people experience Italy's far-flung places and the fading traditions through genuine connection with the local people. So give me just a second to set up this coffee chat. I wanna make sure that I can see your comments as you come through. Take a second to grab your coffee if you're having an afternoon coffee break. Do, do, do. Come on, Facebook, you can do it. Well, it seems to be delayed, but I'll fidget with it in a second. So today's coffee chat topic is about how to use money in Italy. Oh, there it is. Let me grab that so I can see your comments. Okay, it's loading, yay. Okay, cool. All right, so today's topic is how to use money in Italy, cash card and euros explained. So if you are thinking about traveling to Italy, you'll probably wonder, what do I need to do about money? How am I gonna purchase things? Do they, do they take credit cards there? How do I get euros? Do I get euros before I go? Do I get euros when I get there? Where do I get euros? So I'm gonna explain all of that and you'll be relieved to know that it's pretty simple. It's not as big a deal as you might think it is. So I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Please just leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. So um, starting out, before you leave for your trip, you want to call your credit card companies and your debit card, uh, your bank, and let them know that you're going to be traveling. So they will likely ask for the dates that you'll be traveling and all the countries that you'll be in. So you want to make sure that you include any countries where you will have a layover. Um, that way, uh, if you are in an airport and you need to buy something, you'll be able to access your funds. Um, so make sure you call your credit card company and your bank to let them know you'll be traveling. There are a couple other things you want to do when you have them on the phone. Um, so you will want to ask them, is there a fee for uh, making a cash withdrawal from an ATM in Italy while you're in Italy? That way you'll know when you're getting money out if you're getting charged by your bank as well for, for having access, for using um, a, an ATM that's not part of your bank usually. So make sure you're clear on how much that fee is, what to expect so you're not caught off guard. And um, you'll also want to know if you'll be asked for a pin. So I think usually your debit card is gonna ask you for your pin, but make sure you ask, for, ask your credit card company as well because I was once at a train station trying to buy a last minute ticket um, for a quick train that was leaving soon. And uh, my credit card wouldn't go through because it wanted a pin. And I had never been asked for a pin for my credit card. I had no idea what it was. Um, so definitely set one up before you go. If you don't have a pin, you don't know what it is, call, make sure you get that set up and make sure you know what it is. Um, also for your credit card, you'll wanna ask, are there any foreign transaction fees? So that's a fee that sometimes your credit card company will charge you for um, making a purchase in a foreign um, currency. Um, not all banks have those. Uh, I think most credit cards today don't charge that because they know that that's a plus for people that travel a lot. And these days, a lot of people do travel a lot, but you wanna make sure so you know what to expect. So just to recap, before you leave, call your debit, call your bank, your credit card company, make sure they know the dates and places you're traveling, make sure you have a pin set up and you know what it is and ask if there are any foreign transaction fees and just get clear on the process for any time you're gonna use your card. Hi, Julie, thanks for coming, glad you're here. Um, okay, so moving on. Once you land in Italy, before you even leave the airport, I recommend that you uh, go to the ATM in the airport. That way you have euros with you right away because it's it can feel disconcerting to be in a foreign country and not even have like liquid cash ready to use in that country. So 
I recommend just for peace of mind. So you don't have to think about where am I going to get cash? Cause you never know what could happen between the airport and your accommodations. So make sure you go to the ATM when you land. Um, I have learned from experience, the blue ATMs that say Eurostar, I think that's what they're called. Um, those usually charge an extra fee for convenience. So I've learned to avoid the blue Eurostar star ATMs. So if you can see it, if you see a different type of ATM, go for that one. But um, sometimes that's all that you have around, especially in touristy places, they'll often just keep those around because they know that they can make money off of it. Um, uh, yeah, so if you're able to find a different type of ATM, then use a different type. Otherwise, sometimes it's worth it just to have some cash with you. So when I use the ATM, I personally take the maximum out that I'm allowed. So usually it will let you take up to 200 euros, sometimes up to 300 euros. Um, so I always start with like, I test it and I ask for 300 euros and sometimes it'll tell me that I'm not allowed to take that much. So then I go through the process again and get 200 euros. When you're starting out, it will ask you what language to use by the way. So you will be able to access the ATM in English. And um, Abba is leaving a comment here and says 100% agree with getting a little cash when you land. Um, Abba is an avid traveler as well. So thanks Abba. Um, yes, so definitely just for peace of mind and safety. Um, so yeah, choose English when you're using the ATM. And uh, what was the other thing I wanted to mention? Take the maximum out that you're allowed just because you're gonna get charged a fee by your bank most likely every time you use an ATM. So it's cheaper overall if you get the maximum out. And then I recommend that you split that amount, never keep all your cash in one place with you. Um, so keep some on you, put some in the bottom of your suitcase or whatever hidey place you work out. Um, you could, if you want, um, some people might say just to take a little bit of cash out at the airport, um, that way you're not loaded and making yourself a target. But I mean, 200 years is not a crazy amount. Um, so let's see. Sometimes it will ask you to, uh, if you, if it, sometimes the ATM will ask if you want to convert the amount from uh, euros to USD. Uh, I recommend saying no, if it does ask you that because they're basically charging a convenience charge for doing the conversion for you and you're just losing money. So just ignore that. Um, now, in terms of using money, so now you you hop in the taxi and you're able to, to usually you can actually use a card, a credit card in taxis in, in Italy these days. But if you wanted to, you would have the cash ready or if you just wanna leave a tip, which by the way, you don't need to tip uh, taxi drivers in Italy, but some people feel wrong if they don't, so they just like to. Um, so either way that either way that you feel good. So you got to your accommodations, you're set, and now you're out exploring and enjoying your travels. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, when to use cash, when to use card, and what euros are like. So. Uh, the exchange rate is something you will want to be familiar with before you land. That way you just have a general idea. When someone says something costs 10 euros, you have an understanding of how, how much that is. Um, it's always disconcerting when you are in a new country and someone gives you a price and you realize, shoot, I did not even look up the exchange rate. I have no idea if that's a crazy amount or if that's really cheap or if it's normal. So make sure that you get a general sense for the exchange rate before you go. Now, the exchange rate is changing a lot more these days than it used to. Um, right now it is, um, let's see, it takes $1.17 to get one euro. So that's the current conversion. You can download an app called XE Currency. Um, that way you can just plug it in and see right away how much it is. Um, or I, Sometimes we'll just go to Google and type EUR to USD and it has a conversion thing right there. You can just type in the amount of euros or the amount of dollars and it'll spit out the other side of it. Okay, so good so far. Give me a thumbs up if this is good information, if it's helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and I will get to you. Um, so after you understand the exchange rate, um, 
then you are ready to start buying things, uh, which is exciting. There's so, so much to buy in Italy, right? Um, the first thing I usually like to buy is a gelato. You know me, if you've been following, you know I am basically addicted to gelato. Um, so when it comes to buying gelato or any other small purchases, anything that's say less than, really less than 20 euros, it's better to pay cash in euros. Um, in touristy places, of course, they are accustomed to using card. A lot of times you can pay card, but just keep in mind, these merchants are having to pay, um, or these vendors are having to pay merchant fees to the credit card companies. So when you pay by credit card, you're digging into their earnings a little bit. And in Italy, especially, it's really, really hard to get a small business off the ground. So try to support them as much as you can by paying cash. Um, and it's just generally frowned upon to pay a card for something that's less than like 20 euros. So for gelato, especially, please pay cash. You will likely be gathering a, a lot of change. Um, I'll get into that in a second. And you'll probably be ready to get rid of some change. So save, save your change for those moments. Um, now, when you're at a restaurant, you probably will want to pay with card because it, you will likely be paying more than 20 euros if you're eating like a proper Italian. So usually what happens with a restaurant is they'll come over to your table with the um, coin of sale um, credit card machine and they'll take your card and they run it themselves and um, let you sign it when you're right there. I was trying to remember for a second if they ask for your signature. I think it's the same as, as same process as you have in the US. Um, and you can also pay cash if you want. Um, let's see what else. Um, oh, yes. So when you need to use a restroom in Italy, this is kind of a cultural tip. If you run into a place to use a restroom, even a gas station, it's common courtesy to buy something. So you will probably want to, uh oh, it looks like my live just dropped. It's not good. Well, I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna hope that it is, nope, it's not. Oh wait, it is. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm not sure if it's working, but I'm gonna keep going. Um, okay, so when you use a restroom, you will need to pay for something. So that's the moments when I'll just get a quick coffee or I will, um, just buy some gum or just make a small purchase. It's it's just considered rude to use an establishment for the restroom and not support them. So just keep that in mind. And that's another reason that you always want to have a little bit of cash on you. Thanks, Julie. Thanks for letting me know you're still here. I don't know why my, uh, my screen froze, but I'm glad it's still going. Good. Okay, so now I'm going to explain a little bit about euros. So um, it's always fun. I, I, one, one little detail of travel that I love is checking out the currency. I don't know why. I think it's maybe just the idea that um, something so common, something we use every day without giving it a second thought is completely different in other places. I just think that that's so beautiful and it's so fun and it's such a, a cool reminder of how just the differences in cultures and how we normalize whatever we grew up with. Um, so anyway, back to euros. Uh, euros come in a one cent, a two cent, five cent, 10 cent, 20 cent, and 50 cent piece. What's different about euros from dollars is that in euros, one euro is still a coin and even two euros is a coin. So um, that's why I said earlier, you're going to, uh, you're gonna accumulate a lot of change while you're in Italy and you'll be uh, buying a gelato will not only be a good time to have a gelato, but it'll be a good excuse because you need to get rid of your change, right? Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, so the, there's a lot of, uh, there are two more coins in uh, euros, actually three because we in the US don't have a two cent coin. So, um, they'll, they are different sizes, um, and I believe the one cent is, um, 
like copper, not copper. I didn't look up exactly what they're all made of, but it's a different color than the other ones. Um, and then you have bills. There's a five euro bill, a 10 euro bill, a 20 euro bill, 50, 100, 200. When you, when you go to an ATM, um, I believe it lets you, I want, to, I want to say that it lets you choose your bills. I don't think that's accurate. I have been quarantined and I haven't gotten back to Italy in over a year. So please forgive me for not knowing that detail anymore. It's not fresh in my mind. Um, but I believe usually they'll give you actually large bills and then you have to break them. So keep that in mind as well. And actually, if you're at the airport, it would be a good idea to find a kiosk somewhere and see if they will um, give you some change. Um, so yeah, and I also really like to save a few euros at the end of my trip for souvenirs. I think it's really fun to keep that in memory while you're there, even if you're just there for a week, you get used to um, the money. And so when you have some back home and you look at it again, you remember like, oh yeah, like I remember when that was just my my day-to-day -day cash and all, all fun things I bought with those euros. Um, and also it's really fun for people um, back home to see, they think it's really fun to check out the foreign currency as well. And so um, I have a folder with uh, currency from all my travels with um, money from Canada and Albania, Croatia, um, Austria, all these beautiful places. And it's really fun to pull that back out and, and look at it again. So good idea to hold on to that for souvenirs. Um, okay, do you guys have any questions? I'm trying to think if I have any other um, tips about money and cash in Italy. Um, I don't think so. I think that's all I've got. It's pretty straightforward. Um, just to quickly recap, get the cash when you land uh, at the ATM in the airport um and make sure you call your credit card companies and your bank um ask them questions to find make sure you're clear on the pin make sure you're clear on um, foreign transaction fees and exchange anything to do with the exchange rates and things like that download the app xe currency or use google to um, exchange uh, from uh, us dollars to euro so you understand the conversion um yeah you'll get used to the change oh there is one more little detail about the the euro bills they're actually different size so it'll say the number on it five euros ten euros and the bill itself will be a different color and a different size so that's different between our our money as well okay I think that's all I've got for you guys today. I just wanted to do a quick kind of more logistical video to help you out with your travels and make it uh, a smoother journey for you. So if you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I will get to your comment there and uh, reply. Um, otherwise, come back uh, next week. Uh, we are going to be talking uh, with Claudia, who is from Sardinia. So we're gonna learn a bit more about Sardinia, which is a place I'm dying to go. I haven't gotten there yet. It looks gorgeous and what's really fascinating is it's a an island off of Italy that has not not gone through as much of uh, the conquering that the mainland of Italy has from all these different cultures so it has kind of maintained its original culture much more than mainland Italy so I'm excited to learn more about that and the nature, the beaches, even waterfalls and beautiful places, um, different type of cuisine. So definitely check back next Wednesday um, to hear me talk with Claudia. And uh, if you like my Zoom background here, there's a link in the description where you can download 10 free virtual Zoom backgrounds. They're super easy to install on Zoom and um, it's all explained in that link where you can also download them. And they're all beautiful off the beaten path places, all photos that I took in Italy. Um, this one here is Gargano in Puglia. So it's the spur of the boot. If you're looking at the boot of Italy, it's the spur on the back of the boot. And it's beautiful, as you can see, all of these are olive trees. And then the coast, you can see right up there, there's uh, uh, these white cliffs falling into the sea and it's just gorgeous. So definitely an area to check out. And we go there on our Secrets of Southern Italy small group trip. Um, 
So you can check that out at our website, creativeedgetravel.com and click on experiences and trips. Okay, uh, thank you guys for coming and I'll see you at our next coffee chat next week. Ciao.